Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen. Doug White down here in Alabama. Peace and love to everybody. Just tuned in my little channel here. I was noticing over in uh, Berlin, a rally going on. Well, they had quite a crowd there. They didn't like the police state remedy for this supposed pandemic. It's being perpetrated on the world by those in high places. And they didn't like it at all. I don't blame them. <clears throat> you know, uh, this slogan that they got out now, it's, what's the name of that slogan? I got it written down there. Oh, we are all in this together. We are all in this together. Or maybe uh, it takes a village. Where the, uh, the corporate rights of the people, the, the uh, Trump individual rights. Not, but I'm here to put it to you, brothers and sisters, is without individual rights, there's no liberty at all. <clears throat> That's why I'm seeing it down here in Alabama. And anyway, uh, that's a clever slogan. Uh, we're all in this together. But it's really a clever slogan for backdoor tyranny, in my view, down here in Alabama. So uh, are the wheels coming off of this thing? I sure hope so. <laughs> Look over on the, that Berlin rally. I sure hope so, brothers and sisters, <laughs> for our nation's, for our world's sake. That uh, the uh, thing is uh, slowing down. Of course, we just had to, you know, I guess it's where you're at, you know, where you live. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to get back with everybody and talk with them this morning. How's everybody doing? I noticed uh, one of these signs going into the store. Uh, put your mask on so we can all breathe easier. <laughs> I got kind of a chuckle when I walked in because uh, uh, that's kind of like, say, put some earplugs in so you can hear better. <laughs> it restricts my breathing. I don't know about other folks. I guess they were you know, saying uh, that it was going to protect other people. That's what they're really saying, you know. But uh, I'm telling you that the people are starting to get uh, tired of this thing. Because you can go around, you see masks hanging on people's ears. They'll have them down around the chin. And they're just going through the motions. You know, because uh, we weren't designed to. Man wasn't, wasn't designed to be walking around with a mask. But long periods of time, I believe, can be detrimental, detrimental to people's health. They're made to, uh, people are putting them in the pocket, putting them back on. It's detrimental to people's health, brothers and sisters. And this, in my view, brothers and sisters, is backdoor tyranny. You know, I just, I, got, I think I'll coin that phrase. Backdoor tyranny. All the time going under the uh, label of, uh, uh, we're looking out for our fellow man, you know, for, Put your mask on so everybody can breathe easier. Easier, but now, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm again what's going on in our nation and across and around the world. I believe it's backdoor tyranny. It's all about control, and uh, that's the way I'm seeing it. Police state measures is what what's happening right here in front of everybody's eyes. Lots of people are going along with it, you know, but. Uh, not this old man down here in Alabama. Anyway, uh, this thing that's going on reminded me of uh, how people can be controlled by the state and how people's, uh, I'm talking about God's people. 
God's people. I'm not. I don't believe all of these people that uh, are going along with what the, the is told them to do. You know, uh, they're starting to figure it out now. But uh, I don't believe that uh, they are. I believe they're God's people. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. These were people that were. Uh, for whatever reason, were thinking wrong. They <laughs> they were on uh, on they weren't on the right side. They weren't on the right side of truth. You know they were complicit. And uh, so, well, Stephen, the Stephen prayed, but you know don't lay this sin to their charge. Some of them were complicit in stoning Stephen, brothers and sisters. So I don't necessarily believe all these people. These people, the, the your enemies in your own household, brothers and sisters that don't have eyes to see right now for some reason or another. They don't have eyes to see what's going on around them. But Jesus saw some of them, as, uh, and he prayed for them. They know not what they do. Some of God's people. So I'm not, for, uh, you know, I was one of those people at one time in my life, you know. Forgive him, he don't know what he's doing. So that's what the prayer I'm praying for uh, these people out that are, uh, don't see what I can see with my with my eyes, you know, or hear with my ears, you know. But anyway, you know, uh, here's something I want to put out there to you. You know, over there uh, where Paul, where, uh, he heard the voice. Jesus said, uh, to, spoke to Paul when on the road to Damascus. He says, why? I don't know if I can croak this. Kick his thou against the prick. Well, I believe, and everybody debated down through the centuries what's this what is this prick you know but i believe it's the prick in the heart i believe it's the holy spirit and i believe paul uh, i don't i can't tell you exactly how long but i believe before he uh, uh had his uh moment there on, on the road to damascus and was struck blind conversion <laughs> Uh, whatever you want to call it, I believe he was a, a child of grace. His conscience was bothering him, and he was kicking against it. Who knows how long? Because, because she's saying, well, wait a minute here. I'm a, I can just imagine, you know, wait a minute. I'm ahead of a big corporation here, you know. I can't be taking this side of, of this lowly carpenter. You know, I, I imagine, you know, he was thinking that, you know, and hoping it was one to him, you know, and he was kicking against it. A lot of people don't believe that, but lots of folks do believe that Paul, before he got on the road to Damascus, and uh, was up a offer he couldn't refuse, you know, that he was a child of grace, regenerate. That's the way I believe down here in Alabama. And I believe some of these people in high places are, are God's people, yet they're in such a position they're kicking against the prick. But God is ultimately in control in this whole center's view down here in Alabama. Things are going to work out his way. And the children of the day need to keep on keeping on. You're not going to do anything about the children of the night. But you can do something about the children of the day. Okay, my next subject is, let's see. Well, I was going to do something about end time preachers. I got all kind of videos about that. Uh, uh, I heard this uh, end time preacher that's well known, you know, on television, well respected. But I don't want to get into it because I don't really have time. But to make a long story short, I believe that the, the supposed uh, great tribulation that everybody thinks is in our uh, future is really in our past. And, uh, what we're looking forward to now is the uh, imminent. In other words, nobody knows this day. It will come like a snare. And uh, Jesus will uh, come back. And uh, anyway, we caught up together to meet him there. In other words, this is what Martha called the resurrection or the last day. That was the last day. We're looking for the last day. We're not looking for the... Uh, the uh, but anyway, I got videos on that, but I can't get into it because it's too uh, too uh, involved. All you need to know is that uh, what they said, uh, 
what he's is these two or three verses what he said uh, uh, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled the these things question was a question at the uh, uh, at the first that his apostles but his disciples asked him well when shall these things be and he said it would happen before this generation passed away so and then also he added to it uh, uh, he added to that by saying, uh, uh, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. That's the these things question in Matthew 24. There's three questions. And then there's the, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? That's been fulfilled too, but I won't get into that. That's how, that's an, another something everybody thinks is, uh, is uh, the end of the world. But then at the end there is the end of the world question, which has not taken place yet. It comes like a snare, like a thief in the night. Nobody knows that day. Say, brothers and sisters, he could he gave, like I say, a ballpark figure. He said, uh, uh, there be some standing here that shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his power. That he, there was something that happens in the heavens in the first century. A sign that was given that they were looking for. And it was given. And all the work and uh anyway, don't we'll get into it, but it's a big subject, but it's very interesting <laughs> because I saw this big shot on TV talking about, you know, Jesus going to set up a kingdom and reign, rule and reign a thousand years here. But right now, the kingdom was set up during the Roman Empire. He's ruling and reigning right now, brothers and sisters. And, uh, and uh, his enemies are going to make, uh, it, it, in the fullness of time, will be made his footstool. So uh, that's my view on that. But I heard this big shot talking about it. I thought I'd get on here a little bit and refute it. You know, uh, we're looking for now G, is uh, the imminent return. In other words, uh, he gave a ballpark figure for that. This generation, some standing here. He gave a bill. And uh, all these things took place. The temple tore down. All these things, the these things question. But they get on and make movies and scare people and their stuff like that. Make money off of it. But really, that's just an old trick of the devil, in my view. But uh, anyway, I wind this little video up, just rambling from one little subject to another. But I was thinking this morning, I saw Mo Van Berlin turn on my little video thing here. And uh, wow, I wish that, that would come to America. I'm telling you, with the wheels are coming off over there way of this uh, police state thing. So I don't see how it's going to go on, you know, but maybe I don't know what's going to happen, but I uh, don't know what's going to happen. But one thing I know for sure is that when Jesus comes back, he's going to put things right. Okay. <laughs> the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. It's not going to be no thousand year rain. There's going to be a resurrection. Like Martha said, I, the last on at the last day. No more days after the last day, which is in our future, maybe, I hope, and not too far in our future. But anyway, just thought I'd get on and talk to anybody that might be tuned in this little channel of mine and put up this little video. But anyway, God bless everybody. And peace and love from this old boy down here in Alabama. Mm -hmm.